Hey everyone, Wannabot here, and welcome to Seer's Gambit. It is a auto-battler roguelike with, uh, actually I think it's a roguelite, uh, with kind of fine-tuned party-building mechanics. I think even RPG leveling for each of the characters, and then some level of meta progression based on how you progress through the game, I think. Uh, at least that's how it worked in the tutorial, so I'm kind of curious to see how it works in the main game. So, it looks like we're starting with this duelist character, and we have three different places to go. We are effectively fighting against the forces of darkness. So, find secret mushroom spot. Oh, I see. So these are permanent upgrades that we can get, I think, for the rest of the game. But only if I have enough resources to actually go back and pay for these. Form a mercantile caravan. Unlock Swiss cheese protection. The holes are imported. Not available in the demo. Okay, so do we want health? Do we want more health, but I can't do it. All right, let's just go for the damage. Health is nice, but fighting things is nicer, question mark. Let's see how this goes. Mycelian Meadows. So the way the game works is we start with this duelist character, that's our starting character, and then we can recruit up to five other party members, unless maybe we get up to six somehow. So I can get a Frost Mage or a Healer. Uh, I think I'm gonna go for the Healer. I have no idea what happens uh, when my characters die, and I kind of want to avoid that. Okay, send the duelist out. Unfortunately, the enemies just bounce straight over to go hit my healer, which is not great. The other thing I might want to do, characters can level up, which is interesting. I'm going to just give them their their ultimate automatically. We get a bunch of money, and we also get a meaty suit, which I'm going to put on my healer for the time being. Continue on. So we can pick up a Bernard. I'm assuming a Pyromancer. Rosa, a witch. So what does the witch do? Missile flies erratically when it lands, a wisp is created. So possibly a summon? Colossal ball of magical energy, blasting everyone to smithereens. Long range target closest, area of effect, knockback. That's well, not bad. Each wisp zips towards an enemy, detonating on impact. Ooh, so that's kind of a fun combo. What do they have? So he burns himself and enemies. I think I'm going to go for the Witch. Even though they're just a common, they at least have some interesting features. I'm just going to set a lot of things to auto except for healing. I'm going to put her up here. Let's see. Yeah, the problem is the Witch isn't actually very good at tanking. So that is an issue. But yeah, if I can give that witch a whole bunch of attack speed, that'd actually be lovely. Small experience potion. So we do level up over time. I'm just gonna give it to my duelist. Okay. Scarecrow. You see a lone scarecrow sitting on a field, wearing a strange medallion, surrounded by crows, almost shrouding it. You almost feel it looking at you in front of it. There is a cup. Feed the crows, get money. Buy the medallion, get a crow medallion. Or steal the medallion. Take damage on attack one point towards ultimate. I think I'm just going to feed the crows. We'll just take the money. Okay. Yeah, the one problem is I don't actually have any... Uh, I don't have any tanks here. And so I'm kind of re reliant on my guys just managing to stay healthy. So we can gain extra armor, we can reduce attack cooldown or ability cooldown. Take a look. Ability, strikes all surrounding foes, pushing them away. Attack. So attacks every 3 seconds, attacks every 10 seconds. Oh. Skill tree. Okay, good. So this would make it so she attacks every 2.5. This would make it so she attacks or uses the ability every 6 seconds, and this would just give her some armor. Let's go for the ability cooldown. That seems vaguely useful. We've got our alts soon. Which is good because my duelist is about to go down. But it hasn't yet. Okay, so what do we get? Mighty stat stick. Damage... Ability, ultimate, health, attack, cooldown. 
on attack if an enemy has poison, do additional damage. Oh wait, but that's if poison. We don't really have poison. So actually, in that case, get that dialogue out of there. Give them the health. We don't need the leaf. We don't have poison to begin with. Vigilant Razor. After anyone uses their ult, next attack applies bleed. Keep of fire. Crit. Every second do 20% of attack power in an area of effect within three range. That's actually really good. I'm gonna grab the Cape of Fire. I want the unreliable armor kit, but I don't have anything. I think that's fine. I really wish my characters could actually equip multiple items. I understand why they can't, but it would be satisfying. So we get a blessing of power or all executioners gain 10 attack power. I'm assuming this character is not an executioner. Oh, there's also combos we should pay attention to. I'm assuming not an executioner, so let's just do Blessing of Power, save our money. Okay. Well, the duelist certainly did some damage there. We can check stats too, cripes. Which is, um, not pulling her weight. Okay, health is looking kind of okay. I think the fire cape is just killing things. But it's just a worse cape of fire. I think I'll keep working on leveling her up. Okay, so extra health, extra ability power, extra alt power. Oh, party-wide, all adventurers gain ability power. On kill, repair armor. On ultimate kill, ultimate power. I think we might want to just go for the ultimate power combo. Okay, so attack cooldown, on heal, bonus health effect, or just more health. I think we just go for more healing. Yeah, Cape of Fire would be cool, but alas. Oh good, finally we get another party member. And he levels up automatically. Let's see, what's his ability? Makes himself invulnerable for three seconds. What's his regular attack? Pretty weak, long cooldown. I don't know. I think City Guard Fernandez is just going to be tank. There we go. All right, General. What is his ult? He clears the ground as enemy, slamming it and stunning anyone with his, with his folly. Okay. Yeah, I think going ultimate power duelist seems like a really good plan here. Okay, what is this? On attack, apply bleed damage. Go for that. We also have boots, high heal boots, ability power, move speed, on heal, add ability power. Stat stick, attack damage. Let's see. Do we give the witch the experience potion? I don't think so. I think we want to get it so that she's got the, um, her ult move as fast as possible. So, health, move speed, and then heal over time.
Because I like the idea of the heal over time. Attack damage. Because that gives ult power. Oh, on kill can be used again immediately. Cripes. Yeah, we need to build around that. I love the idea of the wing just for the healing, but I don't think we have anybody it really fits. So we can increase health, all defenders gain health, or party-wide extra health. All healer and faith has health reduced to one, party-wide extra health. Defenders gain extra. Oh, that's defender and crowd control. So she would have been an ex executioner. I don't think this is worth it. I think we're just gonna go for the free blessing. I'm gonna keep him there, because I think the bird will warp into the party, yep. And yeah, we want to just keep working around making it so that she can just charge into things and delete them from existence. Okay, attacks when ability is used, throw an axe for 10% damage. I heal shoes. Ooh. Oh, on heal, 10% of ultimate power. Eh. I think we just continue. Oh, and actually we've completed this region. Okay, so now we can go to this and no, we don't have enough resources. We need one more of each, rude. So I can go to the mountains, but not available in the demo. Or we can go here. Crit rate by 1%, unavailable. Or actually, we could go down here. I, I think I'm gonna go down. Okay, so I get a new party member. I could get the Pyromancer. My health isn't looking amazing, but it's not terrible. So yeah, let's go for let's go for a decent level Pyromancer. Let's see. Reduce attack cooldown, increase ultimate cooldown. What is his Health is not very good. Burns himself surrounding enemies if he dies, returns with his armor repaired. And enemy in flames. Damage to it and its nearby allies. I oh, know, I think his auto attack's actually kind of good. Okay, right. We want to go to general. Turn that on. See how this goes. I think this should be fine. Maybe not. I mean, healing seems to be doing okay. Yeah, in retrospect, this looks kind of bad. It doesn't help that my healer is not scaling her ult very quickly. Let's see, so what's she have on ability now? Go for those boots. Prime cleaver, attack damage, reduce movement speed. Attack damage, on attack apply 10% attack power is poison. Now let's just do prime cleaver on this guy. Split them up a little bit. I think the rest we don't care about. Convert into gold. So we have Fingers the Thief. Blind enemies. Teleport behind foes. We also have combos. That is something I should be paying attention to. So two elementalists and nature. Trail of Fire f follows her. 
Ability range is doubled. Oh, but I think these might be on... These might be locks? Or no, we don't have a commoner. Because we have an adventurer. Okay. What about her? Unability use heals self the same amount. So we need... Another noble? Or commoners. I'll have to look into getting more commoners. Well, he is a commoner. Wait. Oh, I can actually fit him into the party. Tech damage, armor, move speed. Yeah, see, he blinds enemies. I don't know. I think I'll just give him the damage. Something like that. I don't know. This is kind of messy. Like I said, kind of messy. Okay, we might actually lose here. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. No. Ma maybe? Yeah, we've lost everybody except for the guard. And my healer. I think I needed an extra healer, though I will admit the spawn locations were kind of rough on this one. So here's the question, do I keep anything? Start from any tavern you have unlocked. So we're starting as an ice witch this time around. And it looks like we do keep our resources, so increases our health? No, I think we want to go back up here so we can get the minimum attack damage by 10%. Okay, so let's actually pay attention to combos this time. So, attacks now taunt the enemy. Ice block roots nearby enemies. Attack has a chance to bounce to new targets. So we need a defender, healer, and a merchant. So that's a healer. Nature. Thief. I guess we'll get the healer. Ice Morelta is a, a defender. That's different. Because I think she's a somewhat long-range one, too. Oh, but not for her abilities. Okay, so that's a concern. Yeah, so that means we've got an okay tank. I'm going to need to work on that. Oh, what do we have? We have a mercenary. What does she need again? We need a defender. Interesting. He counts as a commoner. Or no. Yeah. Huh. Well, I guess I'll just get a second one of them. Then I just have to find a merchant somewhere. Well, let's take the new one. Yes, yeah, so all I have to do is find a merchant. And both of these will get the combo. Hopefully there's still some means of, like, combining characters together to boost their rarity. Well, the damage so far seems to be kind of good. Give her that. High heal kickers. Attack damage, move speed, on heal, attack power. I mean, might as well, right? Thorns, armor, lowest level character levels up. Probably bleed. Ouch. Put her there, put her there. Just in case any of these guys leap forward. Sometimes they do. Yeah, so is the ultimate healer on her just really slow. 10 cooldown. Hmm. And yeah, might as well level her up. 
Okay, so ability power, attack cooldown, or attack damage. So, if I get Fleeting Chill, attack bounces. Well, let's take a look. Ability, area of effect, applies root. Vulnerable gains root, melee damage, area of effect, 15 second cooldown, or just throw damage at foe. Long cooldown. I didn't mean to pick that. I think I actually wanted the attack damage. And there's no way to undo that, is there? Well... It's fine. I'll live. Let's see. Flesh suit. Not my favorite. You know what? Actually, let's just leave it. I was hoping we get a little bit more money. On attack. I think most of these aren't that helpful. Mighty stat stick is like the one that would have been really nice. Party wide extra health. And fortunately for me, I am poor. It makes this a little tougher, but it's fine. And you know what? Let's speed this up a little bit. Whoa. They took the healer out. That's a problem. Only marginally. Give her the armor. Continue on. Okay, put her up there. Snail. Okay, so far so good. Uh, let's see, bombastic side eye. On attack, no. Okay, so do we just keep giving her the ability power? I, I might as well. Seeing is kind of too little too late. A revitalizing Assault would actually be maybe kind of good. So what else do we have? Right, I'm looking for a Merchant. Of course, none of them would be. Well, we could go for Blessed Celestine. Faith, Faith. Attack is used, heal allies. Sure. Okay, so abilities. In melee, heal ally, area of effect. In melee, you attack with an area of effect. Long range. So ability cooldown, ability power, move speed. What is the cooldown on that? Freaking short to begin with. Let's make it even shorter. Okay, let's just keep everything close together. Let's go back to this, turn alts back on auto. Really the only character I want to have complete control over is maybe my healer. Okay, now we can get some things. Tiny hammer, attack damage, attack cooldown, on attack, chance to repair your armor. So that's actually not a bad idea. When an ally crit, heals all allies for 2% of the max health, that's okay. See, ability power, ability cooldown, ability to use, throw dart. What is their armor? Pretty good. Not amazing. Like, the leech scythe is kind of interesting. But none of these characters are attackers. I could get the throwing dart, but I think we just keep going. Yeah, I have no executioners, and we don't have enough money for the sacrifice of blood. Uh, you know what? No, we leave it as as is, because that bird's gonna just dive into the crowd. I kind of like the flail character. She's fun. 
Well, let's go back down to times two speed. Times four is, I think, just a little too fast. There's some items. Armor on attack, chance to become invulnerable. Attack, reduce move speed on attack. Eh. And I'm just gonna keep giving her the abilities. On ultimate kill, gain ultimate power permanently. On ability kill, use ability again. Icemeralda become Icemeralda becomes melee. Interesting. I'm probably just gonna go focus on her ability usage since I whoopsied her talent tree. Okay, so we can upgrade this. So our base damage is higher now. So where do we want to go? Crit rate by one percent. Not that I can actually afford it. So I don't know, I think we just head down for the armor bonus, especially because armor bonus would be good. All oh, right, I should have been checking for merchants. I don't even know if we have merchants in this lineup, but I'm gonna grab her. Okay, for starters, Auto ult. What is her ult? Wounded ally with regenerative root growth. Okay. What's her attack? Long range and slow. Actually, her blow flower is really short. But I still think her ult might be worth pursuing. What are her combos? Overgrowth. So we just need another tank. Ah, right, the Blessed Celestine does not count as a tank. I think if we get the uncommon version of her, then it counts as a tank. That's a big man. Okay, Druid got messed up. But I think we're kind of wrecking Big Boy here. Okay, we are not. Okay, we barely got it. Holy shit. What is this? Orb of Contempt. Guess we'll give that to her. <sighs> Not enough. It's gonna go for attack power. This is gonna go so badly, maybe. I'm gonna roll until I find a good tank. Or a tank. At least we get the combo now. He's not a tank, he's a commoner. At least we've got armor. Yeah, the problem is almost all of my characters are melee. Or melee enough. And so that actually makes Big Lad here a problem. Ooh. I think we might be able to pull this off. Whew. Okay, so what do we have? On attack of enemy has bleed? No. None of these are good. Let's take a look at her. Probably ability cooldown. Blessing of power. This, um, hasn't been that great for me.
Up oh, there goes my big... One of my two healers. Or one of my three, technically, because the Paladin also heals. Like, we have a lot of healing to throw around here. We just don't capitalize on... All of it. We just need better units. Okay. Um... I don't know. Let's go up here. Spread out a little bit, though. What? Okay. I guess she just snapped back to where she was. Doing kind of okay. Nope, never mind. Prep for a big heal. There we go. Kind of doing fine. Actually doing decent now. Let's see. Well, her entire shtick is just to go for pure ability power. Now let's take a look at items. Hurricane. Amulet of Yay Death. Orb of Malice. Tiny Hammer is actually very good. I wish I could have actually checked my stats. I think I'm just going to give him the hammer for the time being. Oh, God. The one guy that messes me or messed me up the last time. And now there's two of them. I mean, who knows? Nope. Well, he... The knight's dead. Yeah, the problem is these suckers are tanky. Maybe we'll just heal through it. Feels like we might be healing through it. Oh, lost our paladin, but otherwise fine. Furno Cloak. Reduce attack cooldown. Every second do 10% of ultimate power and area effects. That's actually kind of good. I just don't know... how much ultimate power we actually have. I don't think we do is the issue. It can I actually check ultimate power, unless it's that. I think we'd just skip the Inferno Cloak. I don't know, something like this. We've got our big heal momentarily. We've got some pretty good AoEs. So we're kind of okay. It's really just if we run into something that can outpace my healing. Because right now I'm, it's three tanks and uh, three healers, which is not great. So healing, healing on the druid side of things is not amazing. I'll probably see if I can cycle her out for something. There we go. Okay, she's Faith. We could go for City Guard Fernandez. I could just get a second Blessed Celestine. But I think I'm going to get rid of that guy for a City Guard Fernandez. I'm just going to give him the tiny hammer. Not that his attack is particularly good. It's not terrible. 
Oh, let's go back to this, turn on his ult. Okay. What I was gonna say though is combos. We have overgrowth now. On ultimate, heal every character with thorns for 80. Oh, that's actually not as good as I was hoping it would be. Do that. Yeah, we've lost City Guard Fernandez, however, Big Lad's down. Gives me a lot more options. So far, so kind of good. I mean, we're doing better than last time, so clearly something's working. High heel boots. On heel, add ability power. Yeah, let's get rid of the Orb of Contempt. It's not very good anyway. Wow, look at all these golden items that I cannot use. We do have the Blessed Ring. <sighs> Blistering Mantle would be absurd on her. Alas, no money. Yeah, we're just gonna feed the crows. God, if we had fed the crows beforehand. Okay. Before we don't need to do group heal, eh, I'll do it. Ooh, there's a snail on my back line, and there's not much I can do about it. There's a weird phrase to say. But hey, here we are. They were mostly good. We don't have much for armor recovery, which I think is a bit of an issue. I mean, what else am I going to do? Yeah, Glorious Shield. Go for that. Not that Glorious Shield is particularly amazing. On heal, Commoner. Party wide, Nobles gain max health. Commoners gain ability up. On kill, permanent attack power per commoner. Huh. I gotta keep that in mind. Because that actually could be really, like, a really fun combo. Okay, yeah, we most assuredly do not have the resources. But I can go down here, which is going to be easier, at the very least. Might be easier. Yeah, none of these are commoners. Could re-roll. I think I'm just going to keep boosting her. Double ultimate power, double ultimate cooldown, air of effects, kill. Two attack power permanently. All spellcasters gain ability power. Because they are spellcasters. Oh boy. I'm just going to put her over there. Something like that. Because the crow's going to... Really, the crow didn't actually go over. All right, worked out. Hmm. Big fear is that this guy's gonna get to my back line. I killed him instantly. I think this is where we lose. I think the big problem I can point to on this run, we didn't find like any higher rarity characters. Well, we have a Blessed Celestine. I guess we might as well just head down here for that 10% health bonus. Okay, uh, what are what are her combos? Ability has a chance to do double damage, smite evil. So two spellcasters, an area of effect. Savior, 
Ultimate makes the target invulnerable or attack is used. Heal allies nearby for eight. I do actually like the idea of attack healing. Now we have one faith. Alt affects more than four enemies. He explodes. Gallant Knight is hit. 10% chance to automatically blind the source. Taking damage 20% chance the attack cooldown resets. That's kind of interesting. Mug. Ooh, on attack there's a 20% chance that the enemy drops five gold. Glod. Sorry, not gold. Hey devs, if you're listening, don't fix this. Switch the gold so it's always Glod. Unless that was your intent from the start, at which point I am fully in support of that, because that's very funny. Well, there's not really much of a strategy I've got at the moment, just get in there. There's a mild temptation to go for a build that is just like all money all the- or not all money all the time, all melee all the time, just like really get in there and womp things. The problem with the thief is, I mean, I guess you have to effectively fix his attack speed. I'll have to look at the Celestine, because I think her ability triggers often, which is how she heals. Well, definitely experience potion. Definitely more plate mail. Okay, so I guess the question is once again combos, because I kind of want mug. So that's another noble, commoner, executioner. Oh, let's just get another one. Cause yeah, if we can if we can get this early, we get a lot of money, especially if we can give him good attack speed. Yeah, the only immediate problem is we'd have mm, functionally no... No DPS here. But I do have a lot of healing. Kind of. Well, at least we get him the tiny hammer. Not that it's actually that good, but it reduces his attack cooldown and gives him a lot more damage. Okay, Boon of Thorns. Cause, yeah, does he even have- oh no, he does actually have some armor. So I guess there is merit in ha giving him that hammer. Okay. I'm probably just going to use most of the experience potions on my main character, because they're the only ones that won't be replaced. Oh. Okay. So their ability has a very short cooldown. Okay, in melee, heal ally, area of effect, melee, attack enemy with area of effect. Yeah, so it seems like going hard on ability is probably the best thing I can do. Reduce the ability cooldown, increase the ability power. All faith gains attack power. On attack, heal all allies for 1%. Ultimate gain ultimate power permanently if target is below 50%. Ooh, that is, I mean, that's, that's also very good. these guys up. I just want to get one archer here. Because if I can get that, we get the whole... Uh, we just get the, the free money every fight. Which has solved so many problems. I'm just getting a begin fight. Doesn't really matter. Oh. You know what? Actually, the thief... The thief is fine. Uh, 
Okay, Thief gets attack damage, armor, move speed. Ability cooldown, party wide. All allies with Thief tag gains attack power. Dodge chance. Ultimate power per enemy hit by ability permanently. I just don't know what ultimate power even does for him unless that does damage. <sighs> I mean, best thing I could give him would be maybe armor, probably attack damage. I was hoping attack speed would be an option, but it looks like no dice. I really should move them closer to begin with. I'm just lazy. The Blessed Celestines chuck allies behind them when doing their ults. And it's a little goofy. Because they will absolutely just chuck chain each other. Okay, attack damage, move speed, attack cooldown, and ability cooldown. We do also have the throwing axe. I think that's better than those. Definitely a little bit more DPS heavy, and I cripes. Okay, let's let's take a look at these combos. I need an adventurer is the big one. And so like, it is a temptation to replace one of my blessed Celestines with a better one. None of my characters work off of, eh, there's savior, which is good. And then there's smite evil. So like, Ice Meralda might not be terrible. Rip my money. I guess we get Blossom. That sucks. And I think we want her ults. I don't even know which characters of mine count, or what characters there are that are adventurers. Unless they, I literally don't have them in the game at the moment. Like, I might have to unlock them? I don't know. I was just like, if I can get that 20% chance of getting money, it'll pay for all of the rerolls. But, I guess that is the downside. Boon of Thorns. I'm just gonna let him go. Ooh. That's kind of rough. I guess it's fine. It's working somehow. On attack, 3% chance to repair all of your armor. That's tough. I guess I'll just cycle that out. This is the other Blessed Celestine. I'm probably just going to reduce the ability cooldown. And on attack, heal all allies for 1%. All faith gains 20% attack power. Or ultimate, gain all ultimate power permanently if target's below 50% health. I think I'm going to go for the heal all allies just because. The ultimate scaling one is interesting, but I just don't actually know if that really is going to work for me. Okay, we can help the farmers. Now, blacksmith for armor. Oddly enough, actually, the defensive rune magic is a little bit more within my grasp. What else do we have? Barbara Ian becomes available, wants to find new hairstyles. Maximum ultimate power, but we can't do that because we don't have that. Not available in demo. Yeah, neither of those. What the other one? 
Max ability power. So that actually is reachable. You just don't have enough. Seems like the easiest thing for me to do is come up here just to see if I can get the defensive rune magic. Eight more crystals is possible, but unlikely. Oh, is that a... Um, that's an epic blossom. Welp. Okay, so what combos does she have? I mean, not enough, but it's fine. All right, let's go, thorns. I guess I should have paid attention because there were birds flying out. Oh, do I not have either of these on auto? Oops. I mean, at least we've got silly healing, and those thorns are kind of good damage, because it'll wreck him. Oh, da, 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 da. Armor, crit, some other things. I think I'm just going to put it on her. Now that I have an epic character. Are you an adventurer? No. Oh, let's see. On ultimate, heal every character. We did have that last time didn't work. Wait, Aween Spellcaster. We actually want her. Because that gets us Smite Evil. Ability has a chance to do double damage. Okay. Uh, attack, right. Creates magic missiles. Crit, attack damage. Yeah, let's just go for attack damage and cooldown. Because if I can get her to summon a bunch of wisps... She can just blast a couple of things. I'm gonna spread them out a little bit. Let them go. Unfortunately, yeah, I have no functional control over most of this, but that's okay. Nope, Thief's already down. Ouch. Yeah, these guys just hit like trucks. It's hard to work around. We might actually just lose here. And I will see. No, I think we're good. We just have enough healing. The... <laughs> the druids are aggressive healers. Let's see. Basher. Attack damage. I mean, I guess we'll give it to her. Blessing of power, worship, or sacrifice of blood. But can't do that. Something like that. Oh, she went down in that instant. I think we just don't have enough tank. Or durability. Yeah, my... Well, if we can kill him, we're, we're good. Those big guys are terrors. Okay. We're rapidly approaching the point where I'm probably just going to instant lose, but you never know. Actually, I think we have this handled. It's really those big guys that just one-shot my units and there's not much I can do about it. Because I can heal everything else. It's just those suckers. Tiny hammer. Yeah. Level up. Ultimate cooldown, health, ability power, ability cooldown. Ultimate cooldown. Alright, let's go. On attack, enemy has bleed. No. Hurricane. Move speed, reduce attack cooldown. Why? Actually, not certain about any of these.
The Cape of Fire could be kind of good, but not for any of these characters. The only one that would be maybe worthwhile is the Flesh Suit, just to give this character a ton of durability. I think I will. Okay, Boon of Wood. Ten flat armor. Seems worth it. Okay, something like that. That bleed's gonna be a little tough. Uh, Yeah, my main goal here is to hopefully have her with a boatload of HP that won't just get one shot by these guys, because we've got tons of healing to sustain her. Looks like it worked. Okay, so let's put her over there so she's more likely to actually survive that long. Kill my druids. Should be good. Uh, okay. Thieves come in. Yeah. It sure kits for 116 damage somehow. Oh, it's Wild Strike. So, reduce ultimate cooldown. It's only a five second cooldown, cripes. Like, getting that extra max health might be nice. I think I'm gonna give him the ability cooldown just for blinding enemies. Now, are any of you actually secretly adventurers? No. Because I think we need to get rid of Fingers the Thief at this point. Ice block now roots nearby enemies, so that's not a bad idea. <sighs> what do they have? An adventurer executioner. On attack to area of effect equal to thorns for each character with thorns. I mean, that would be great. Every enemy caught in ability explosion, add another wisp. Nerve effect elementalist. Oh. Yeah, I'm just gonna get rid of him for another one of these. Because that gets us some combos. So, specifically, I think they combo off of each other so we get wistful explosion. And actually, if we could replace the other Rosa, that would be even better. Because this one specifically is an elementalist, this one is not. But if they're both elementalists, they both get Wisp Wish. I have no idea how to affect the chances of that happening, but um, would be lovely. Let's do that just in case there's AoEs that we need to worry about. Well, that's a hell of a lot of wisps to just absolutely demolish enemies with. Yep. Yeah, I wonder if you can fuse characters together, because that is something I wish you could do. Like, if you find a duplicate of them, if you could slap an upgrade. Okay, so... I can ability cooldown. We lose a little bit of damage. But I think it's worth it. I don't think those are good. Give her the experience. Level up as well. Ultimate power, attack cooldown. I think we just want... I think we kind of want the attack cooldown.
Because if I can get her attack cooldown, now she fires every second, which is more wisps. Okay, we actually have enough money to buy something. Attack damage, move speed, no. Like, Orb of Malice could work, but on a different run? Feed the crows, get 100 gold. That'll be helpful if we survive to get another shop. Okay, put her there. Okay, so this is iffy. Yeah, unfortunately, my, my tanks absolutely will just warp around. So they're not actually very good at tanking. But surprisingly, we lived. Yeah, this is a common capo fire. Don't care. Hey, we actually beat the run. Did I get enough crystals, though? That's the question. I did. So we can actually snag that upgrade. I think you can get both. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm just going to go over here. We're not going to be able to make it. We're going to get wrecked here, but it's fine. All right, and these are all bad. So I'll just give her some more experience, level her up, get her the attack speed. On Wisp created a uh, chance to gain ability power. Yeah. These characters are going to be generating all sorts of Wisps. Alright. So I think the main thing is, I think I'm going to want to give my Paladins just health. At this point, the extra armor would be nice, but we can't keep it. But just making them beefy seems to work the best. Because then they just don't die. Oh. I never set her ultimate to auto. And I think that's what kills me. Because, yeah, we've lost our tank. It, the problem is these guys are summoning endless little dudes. And we're spending too much time fighting them, and not enough time. Yeah, it's fine. I didn't really expect to win. The fact that we managed to make it through multiple regions is good enough for me. And, you know, with successive runs, I mean, it gets easier and easier. It's got meta progression. I think the big one was I was really hoping I could actually get the thief money, because that would have given me some options. Even then, I, I think my biggest complaint about this game is I wish uh, characters could equ equip at least two items. Maybe that's a meta progression thing. Like, maybe a, an extra item slot is something that you can find. Because that would be incredible. Uh, just, just for example, my tanks there, I had to give them health. And that wasn't the most satisfying. Um, purely from the perspective of, like... I don't know, I wanted to combo for other other things in their abilities and instead I had to mostly combo for them not getting one shot by that one enemy. I guess maybe the thing is, once I have enough, you know, the defensive magic, for example, and then the increase armor by 10%, and then I get in here and I get the Swiss cheese of protection, whatever that is. You know, once I get enough meta progression, maybe that's when I don't need to invest in the extra HP items because I can just go for other stuff. Ah. Uh, yeah, probably. I don't know. It's definitely one of those to play around with once the game actually comes out. I think maybe the other one is maybe if the gear and equipment had some randomized effects on them. So like, hey, here's a sword that also gives you plus 50 HP. Uh, so, nor you know, here's, here's what it normally does, but here's like a bonus trait on top of that. The prefix and affix system of Diablo. It, in fact, I'd even say... I kind of wish the game just had, like, a full-on Diablo loot and equipment system. Make the enemies harder, but give me a ton of items to, like, put onto my characters for a ton of nitty-gritty combos. Uh, I recognize that would be a nightmare to balance, but on the flip side, it would be so much more gratifying coming up with crazy combos and weird, uh, weird abilities. But, again, I recognize that might be too much work and sometimes limiting it down to one item. 
uh, is fine. I did really like the, the skill tree system. I thought this was good. I think some of the classes, I almost, uh, I don't like the upgrades as much, but I kind of recognize why they are that way. So in this guy's case, like, I would love some attack speed so I can use the, uh, well, Bleeding Slash would actually be kind of nice, but specifically mugged for the five Glaude. Ooh, I wonder if that scales with attack power. Maybe. It's the numbers in green, so maybe it does get boosted by attack damage. That'd be nice. Uh, let's see. So what else do we have here? Ultimate, throw dagger, scales with ultimate power, dodge gain armor permanently, attack does damage on all enemies with bleed. Let's see, every active bleed gives extra attack power. So I guess there are some options and I guess he does have the ability to reduce his attack cooldown a little bit in there. And short enough that you could probably get it down lower with uh, the correct items. I don't know. I. I guess I should reserve too much of my feedback from when the game actually comes out, because I think it's actually in a very solid place. As far as auto battlers go, it's compelling in its own way. And I like the fact that it is designed for multiple successive runs that get harder and harder and harder. Um, one of the other things that uh, has popped up a couple of times that I didn't read, I don't think, uh, at least I didn't read it aloud, is eventually you unlock other taverns that you can start from. So when you die, you can res respawn here, but you know maybe there's a tavern right here. So I could actually respawn in the center of the map and get access to other locations. And it seems like difficulty scales largely based on how many days have passed rather than where you are. So you could actually go pretty far and get a lot of upgrades. And I think that's, I mean, yeah, increase maximum ability power minimum, minimum. Yeah. So just getting around and getting all the meta progression is probably going to make such a massive difference in game feel. And that's something I have to just kind of accept. Anyway, uh, if you want to play Sears Gambit yourselves, it is available now in demo form on Steam, and it's fairly good. There's a decent amount of content available in it, a lot of different characters, some character classes to unlock, and wild combos that I'm sure I haven't even peeked at. Uh, oh, right, I was going to say I loved the class combo system, but the fact that it didn't require specific classes, it just required specific class uh, tags that felt very good just because that means yeah eventually once there's a ton more classes in the game you really can mix and match a lot more freely too many games are like you must have the pyromancer to get this combo and that's boring but instead you know oh it just has to be one elementalist well there's a bunch of elementalists so just pick and choose your favorites or you know whatever shows up in the pool first um I don't know. I I have a lot of positive things to say and think about this game, and I'm looking forward to seeing where it goes. But for now, at least, uh, I guess if you want to play this yourselves, just follow the link in the description below. And if you like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like. It helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new games every single day, then hit subscribe because I got tons to check out and show off. But for now, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.